God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by His infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, Yet ought we most chiefly so to do, when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts, we have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults, Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesu our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open thy lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, may speak to save us.
The first lesson is written in the sixth chapter of the second book of Kings, beginning at the twenty-fourth verse. Afterward, Ben Hadad, king of Syria, mustered his entire army and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria, as they besieged it, until a donkey's head was sold for eighty shekels of silver, and a fourth part of a cap of dove's dung for five shekels of silver. Now. There were four men who were lepers at the entrance to the gate, and they said to one another, "Why do we sit here till we die? If we say, 'Let us enter the city,' the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. So now come, let us go over to the camp of the Syrians. If they spare our lives, we shall live, and if they kill us, we shall but die." So they arose at twilight. To go to the camp of the Syrians, but when they came to the edge of the camp of the Syrians, behold, there was no one there, for the Lord had made the army of the Syrians hear the sound of chariots and of horses, the sound of a great army, so that they said to one another, Behold, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of Egypt to come upon us. So they fled away in the twilight and forsook the tents. The horses and the donkeys, leaving the camp as it was, and fled for their lives. And when these lepers came to the edge of the camp, they went into a tent and ate and drank, and they carried off silver and gold and clothing, and went and hid them. Then they came back and entered another tent, and carried off things from it, and went and hid them. Then they said to one another. We are not doing right. This day is a day of good news. If we are silent and wait until the morning light, punishment will overtake us. Now, therefore, come, let us go and tell the king's household. So they came and called to the gatekeepers of the city and told them, We came to the camp of the Syrians, and behold, there was no one to be seen or heard there. Nothing but the horses tied, and the donkeys tied, and the tents as they were. Then the gatekeepers called out, and it was told within the king's household. And the king rose in the night and said to his servants, "I will tell you what the Syrians have prepared against us. They know that we are hungry. Therefore, they have gone out of the camp to hide themselves in the open country, thinking, when they come out of the city, we shall take them alive and get into the city." And one of his servants said, "Let some man take five of the remaining horses." Seeing that those who are left here will fare like the whole multitude of Israel that have already perished, let us send and see. So they took two mounted men, and the king sent them after the army of the Syrians, saying, "Go and see." So they went after them as far as the Jordan, and lo, all the way was littered with garments and equipment, which the Syrian had thrown away in their haste. And the messengers returned and told the king. Then the people went out and plundered the camp of the Syrians. So a measure of fine meal was served for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel, according to the word of the Lord. Now the king had appointed the captain on whose hand he leaned to have charge of the gate, and the people trod upon him in the gate, so that he died, as the man of God had said when the king came down to him. For when the man of God has said to the king, Two measures of barley shall be sold for a shekel, and a measure of fine meal for a shekel, about this time tomorrow in the gates of Samaria, the captain had answered the man of God, If the Lord Himself should make windows in heaven, could such a thing be? And he had said, You shall see it with your own eyes, but you shall not eat of it. And so it happened to him, for the people trod upon him in the gates. And he died. Here endeth the first lesson.
The second lesson is written in the 18th chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, beginning at the first verse. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth, and he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to leave Rome. And he went to see them, and because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them, and they worked, for by trade they were tent makers. And he argued in the synagogue every Sabbath, and persuaded Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy arrived from Macedonia, Paul was occupied with preaching, testifying to the Jews that the Christ was Jesus. And when they opposed and reviled him, he shook out his garments and said to them, Your blood be upon your heads. I am innocent. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. And he left there and went to the house of a man named Titius Justus, a worshiper of God. His house was next door to the synagogue. Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed in the Lord together with all his household. And many of the Corinthians, hearing Paul, believed and were baptized. And the Lord said to Paul one night in a vision, Do not be afraid, but speak, and do not be silent. For I am with you, and no man shall attack you to harm you. For I have many people in this city. And he stayed a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. But when Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews made a united attack upon Paul and brought him before the tribunal, saying, This man is persuading men to worship God contrary to the law. But when Paul was about to open his mouth, Gallio said to the Jews, If it were a matter of wrongdoing or vicious crime, I should have reason to bear with you, O Jews. But since it is a matter of questions about words and names and your own law, see to it yourselves. I refuse to be a judge of these things. And he drove them from the tribunal. Here endeth the second lesson.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Give more than either we desire or deserve. 
Pour down upon us the abundance of thy mercy, for giving us those things whereof our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask. But through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, now and forever. Almighty God, who in Christ Jesus hast fulfilled to the sons of men thy ancient word of promise, grant us grace to lay hold upon that promise by a living faith, 
that we may receive thy gift of righteousness, and at the last may enter upon our eternal inheritance through the merits of the same thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord our God, give us more love, more denial of self, more likeness to thee. Teach us that it is better to give than to receive, better to forget ourselves than to put ourselves forward, better to serve than to be waited on. And unto thee, the God of love, be praise and glory for ever. Amen. O blessed Lord, who by thy word and example has shown us the meaning of neighborliness and the way of love. Grant that we may learn to recognize as our neighbor every fellow man who needs our help and to serve him with the love that is costly and unselfish, like thine own love for us. We ask this for thy name's sake. Amen. Grant us, O Lord, to love Thee with all our hearts, with all our mind and soul and strength, and our neighbor for Thy sake, that the grace of brotherly love may dwell in us, and all hatred, envy, and malice may die in us, to the glory of Thy name. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and thus promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us, be amongst you, and remain with you always. Amen. <music>